My name is Dr. Vasudevan and I work in Sir Gangaram Hospital in the Department of Surgical Gastroenterology and Liver Transplantation. My focus or my, uh, what I like doing is to treat patients with diseases on the liver. So very often patients ask me, how common is liver disease? The more common type is the fatty liver, very common. Sometimes 20 to 25% of the Indian population has fatty liver. And this is much more than what we see in other countries, in the, even more than the developed countries. We seem to have a tendency to develop fatty liver. How do we know we have a fatty liver? Well, we only know we have a fatty liver when it gets detected on blood tests or on ultrasound imaging. On its own, fatty liver is not very dangerous. But it's just a marker that there could be other problems that are more dangerous. So if you have fatty liver, it shows that we could be having a heart disease, we could be having high cholesterol, we could be having a tendency to stroke, which are far more important than the fatty liver itself. The more, uh, the more serious type of liver diseases which can kill are the liver tumors and liver cirrhosis. They're not very common, but the problem is because they're not very common, they don't get treated on time. What happens is inevitably, the patients reach us at a stage where I'm not possible to help them. Because the tumors have either spread beyond when I can help them by surgery, and it can make a heaven and hell of a difference. If we can operate a patient, we can expand or we can extend the life of that person by many years. But when, when other treatments are tried and when they reach us late, they come to us where they have unfortunately only a few weeks or few months to survive. So it's not, the incidence is not very high, but the impact of appropriate timing on treatment is very high, is very significant. So also cirrhosis. We have a large proportion of patients in India with cirrhosis or with acute liver failure. Today, we are fortunate that many patients from around Southeast Asia and many patients, even from the developed nations, come to us for the treatment for these very conditions because the, the treatment that is available to us is effective and is very cost effective as compared to what it is available in the West. So the Westerners come for cost effectiveness and the Southeast Asian countries and the underdeveloped countries from Africa, from Middle East come because such treatment is not yet widely available in their countries. And what is this, this treatment? So cirrhosis of the liver is not very high in prevalence, that means it's not very frequent in the society. But when it is frequent, we have very good treatment for it. If we treat the patient on time and that today involves removal of that liver because that liver has a potential to develop cancer so we remove that liver and we put in a new liver in this part of the world in India we need a family relative to donate a portion of that liver and this procedure is, is called live donor liver transplant live donor liver transplant has become very established in Southeast Asia, more so in Delhi. The whole process started in a big way in our own hospital and I'm proud to be continuing that lineage. It's been around for from about 2005, 2006, so it's about eight, nine years now. And uh, about 500 to 600 such operations are done in Delhi, maybe more, maybe 700 in a year in Delhi. And for a person who would otherwise, without a transplant, not survive six, seven months, transplant results in a normal or near normal life expectancy. The only thing that creates a problem is the continued medicines after transplant or the disease coming back for the transplant. So again, when they're appropriately treated, the success rates of transplants are well above 90%. And these are comparable to any of the best centers in the world. It's a matter of great pride that such kind of treatment is available to us. So, so again, the prevalence of this disease is not high, but the impact of treatment and at the right time is very high. Uh, what
what really happens is it's become a fashion to get our annual health checkups done these days. So we all of us get annual health checkups and 10 to 25 percent of them will end up having a consult with a liver specialist and they are told on the ultrasound that they have a fatty liver. What does that mean? It really means that there is fat actually getting accumulated in the cells of the liver. Fine. So is that harmful in the long run? It's not harmful per se in the sense that fat in the liver when it keeps accumulating will progress to liver failure in a small fraction, 2% or 3% or less and over a long period of time, say for example 25 years, 20 to 25 years. So do we need to do anything at all for it? We do. Why? The reason for that is the, the presence of fat in the liver cells also means that there's going to be fat in other places where it should not be and can be more dangerous. Like for example, it can affect the heart, it can affect the brain. So the incidence of heart disease and uh, stroke is much higher in those who are going to have uh, a fatty liver. And we Indians seem to be genetically predisposed to developing this fatty liver. So what should we do? Well, there's lots we can do and unfortunately I don't have a magic pill that we can give to get rid of that fat in the liver or wherever it's not supposed to be. We need to change the way we behave. We're not genetically inclined to keep having a high calorie rich meal and keep on accumulating the fat. It also goes into the liver. We need to maintain an ideal height. We need to have a balance between caloric income and expenditure. We can't, unfortunately, there is no health credit card where you can spend more than you can actually take in. Like we can do with finances. Right? So there are a few diseases which predispose to fatty liver. Like if we have diabetes, controlling that. Like if we have high cholesterol or hyperlipidemia, controlling that. But having said that, again, being overweight contributes in a big way to both diabetes as well as hyperlipidemia. Smoking is another big reason for acceleration of fat-associated problems. Alcohol, again, another big reason for uh, accelerating diseases that are related to fatty liver and the risk factors that it, that it uh, brings to our body. So what we really need to do is make sure we have an ideal way, are conscious about what we eat and conscious about the expenditure of our calories in terms of our physical exercise. Not to smoke, it's not good except for the companies that produce the cigarettes. Alcohol, keep it in, in moderation and adjust our lifestyle to include physical activity at least three times a week. The aim is to get to our ideal body weight. This is the best way and unfortunately this is no magic trick. This isn't a big secret, everybody knows about it. It's all about, um, it's about making up our mind and being determined to stick to our own ideal weight and it's very easy to calculate the ideal weight. You get your height in centimeters so if your height is 150 centimeters, you minus 100 from it. So your ideal weight will be about 50. So try and get to about 50, 52. And if you have borderline diabetes or borderline uh, cholesterol, most likely by just getting down your weight to that limit, it's going to go away. So I think that the doctor has less role here to play than you, you, have, you yourself have. All the best.